morning, everybody. This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and let us be glad in it. It is good to see you all in the house of the Lord together today. As we gather here, I just want to remind you that we will be doing some singing. If you feel better or more confident um, in sitting in the back of the church, um, please feel free to do so, um, so that you can feel comfortable in the midst of this. We're reminding you to still um, safe distance and also to wear your mask. Also, as we gather together today, I want to remind everybody that coming up soon at the end of the month, the last Wednesday of April, we will be delivering um, items to Fairview Hills as part of that new ministry. And we are in need of uh, snack pack puddings, it looks like, in particular. So if you have any snack pack pudding you can um, bring in, we would greatly, greatly appreciate that. Also, fruit bars. If you have any fruit bars that you would like to donate, we'd be glad to take them. And we're delivering that once a month. So this is an ongoing ministry, along with the other ministries. And I thank you for your faithfulness as you carry that on. Also, just a reminder that Sunday school is back up and running. Um, for those who are part of the young adult class, you'll be meeting downstairs in a fellowship hall. And for those who are youth, you'll be meeting in the youth group. And for those of the other group that normally meets over here in this room, we'll be meeting in the back of the church in a gathering room today. So at this time, I invite any children, are there any children who want to come up this morning and hear the children's message? Or maybe you could even hear it too, um, wherever you are. Okay, well, it looks like you'll be hearing my children's message then during the sermon. So that's good, isn't it? Okay, well, let us rise together and prepare our hearts for worship this morning. We just recently celebrated Easter. But may you celebrate Easter every day. And may you remember always that Jesus died for you out of Jesus' love for you. In this time of desperation, when all we know is doubt and fear, there is only one foundation.
Thanks be to God. children. We bring praise and worship unto you. And as we are gathered here, may we open ourselves up to your Holy Spirit. And Lord, remind us that no matter where we are, what kind of day we are having, that we are your children, lavishly loved by you. So Lord, let us soak up that love this morning, just like we soak up the sunshine. And let us be transformed and renewed by your spirit so that we can be the church revived, the church that is bold, the church that is committed, 
and a church that seeks to serve you in all that we do. We ask this in your holy name, the name above all names, that one day every child of God shall profess, every knee shall bow, and declare that you are Lord of all. And for that we give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The first scripture I would like to share with you this morning is from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not been yet revealed to us, but what we do know that is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And all those who have this hope purify themselves, just as Christ is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins. And in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either known him or seen him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is righteous, righteousness, and just as he is righteous. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now I ask this morning that as you soak up God's love, you soak up the words that Dennis is going to sing before us this morning as he is our special music, God's voice box. Thank you. You 
are perfect in all of your ways to us. Love so undeniable, I, I can hardly speak. So unexplainable, I I can hardly think as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still into love, love, love. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am, you're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Thanks be to God. Let us rise together for the hearing and the reading of the gospel lesson this morning. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your heart? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is myself. Touch me and see me, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and Jesus took it, and he ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnessing, you are witnesses of these things. My friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Penetrate our hearts and this atmosphere. As your word is shared with us, may it bring with us a new understanding of who you are and what you want to be in our lives. So Lord, as you are faithful, let us be faithful to you. And may the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you in all that we do. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. So I don't know about you, but I like to receive things that are new. And especially when I was young, I loved to receive a new toy. 
And even as I'm older, sometimes I like a new toy, especially when I can connect it with the gospel. So this morning, I brought one of the toys off of my shelf. Does anybody from my generation, or maybe another generation, know what this is? It's a Rubik's Cube, absolutely. Now, there was one time that this Rubik's Cube was like new. All the greens were together, all the reds together, all the blues were together. But what happened? I picked it up. Me thinking maybe I could get it right. I messed it up. And you know what? It hasn't been right since. But I know that somebody out here has, or somebody in the world has wisdom. I've seen it on videos where they can put this Rubik's Cube back together the way it's supposed to be in little time connected to what it would take me. But here's the deal. If, if, if Jesus were here and Jesus being all-knowing, he could get it back together, make it all new again. And the reality is, as much as we like to have all things being made new, God is constantly making you and I new again by working within our hearts, by prompting us to recognize where we sin, by prompting us to recognize, yeah, sometimes we don't have it all together. But as that song that Dennis sang this morning, you're a good, good father. And Dennis, that's funny that you sang that because I was struggling with that. Do I include that song with the worship today or not? And that, that's the reason why God knew that um, Dennis was going to sing it all along. But see, that's the kind of God we have. One that has it together even though we don't realize it. And we are called to be in a relationship with him as he desires to lavish us, to cover us, to penetrate us with his love, forgiveness. Why? Because God is making all things new. And therefore, our identity is, I am a child of God. I am, and we are, a part of the family of God. So this morning, I'm going to be talking about the identity that we have in God, especially coming from the book from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. As John shares God's word with us today, John is writing to the church in the middle of conflict. In chapter 2, if you go to verse 19, you can see where the people and the false teachers denied who Jesus was as the incarnation of God. And they claimed in their lives that they were not people who committed sin. And what was happening is the false teachers, as they sought to lead people astray, they began to actually draw people closer to them. If you look at James 2.29, it says, If you know that Christ is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. Then comes the scripture. Behold, how the great the love of God has bestowed upon us that we should be called children of God. Children of God, that is who we are. So in this, let me set the context for today. In the Roman culture, there were children not children necessarily, but there were adoptions. However, these adoptions did not often happen out of compassion and desire to give a child a home. In the Roman culture, it was mostly young adults who were men and adults who were adopted. 
Now you might say, why is that? Well, in this, we would recognize that as people carried out adoptions, they were more concerned about their family name or the inheritance that was to be given. Often, these adoptions would happen as people who did not have children would adopt children for the reason of extending the family name, for the reason of a good inheritance. And when the man was adopted, he was called to cut the apron strings from his parents, from his biological family, and then move forward with a new family, with a new name, with new expectations, in a new context. So in this, we're reminded of this newness that God is talking about. So in the scripture, as you'll remember, as was shared earlier, there are two specific points made in this scripture. When Christ is revealed, the faithful, those who believe in him, will see him as he is. And not only that, the second thing is, when we see Christ as Christ is, the scripture tells us that we shall be like him. And if you look at Galatians chapter 3, verse 26, Paul says, we are all children of God. Through faith in Jesus Christ, we of children of God are set apart, set apart from the children of the world. Also in Romans chapter 8, verses 14 to 17, Paul says, For those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves, so that you will live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself testifies with our spirit that we indeed are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs. Heirs not to riches, as the world knows it, but we are heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in God's glory. I don't know about you, but there are some days I look into the mirror and I might be having a bad hair day, or a bad makeup day, or maybe a bad day, period. But the reality is, as I look at myself, I might say that I'm not good enough. Even the world might be telling me that I'm not good enough. But here's what God's word says. In John chapter 3, 16, God says to us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only, only begotten son, so that you and I shall not perish, but have everlasting life. My friends, we are God's children. And we have one foot planted in this world, but our other foot is planted in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven fulfilled. And my friends, those who do not know Jesus have their feet planted in this world, not just one foot, but both feet. And the reality is, when we look at our lives, None of us are good enough by the flesh. But through the adoption, through the love of Jesus Christ, we can claim ourselves as an identity of being children of God. As shared in Ephesians chapter 424, we will put on the new man, the new woman, who in the likeness of God has been created in righteousness and holiness of truth. In today's scripture lesson, John is saying that sin 
and holiness are very different from one another. We are called to live into that righteous life and to maintain holiness. How do we do that? We do that by celebrating and living in to God's means of grace that God offers us. And this means of grace can be known as holy communion, holy baptism, being in a community of worship, being in study through God's word, being people of prayer. Those are the ways that God has provided for us to receive and to be in that pathway of God's holiness and God's righteous people. And through that, live into God's grace. And later on, Paul is talking about seeing in a mirror dimly in 1 Corinthians 13, 12. He says, now we may see in the mirror dimly, but when we shall see each other face to face, I know in part, then I know fully, even as I am fully known, until we see Jesus face to face, until you and I enter the kingdom of heaven, God will still be working in us and through us. And that is called the grace that God loves us so much, that God gives us grace freely without cost to you and I. And that grace, as John Wesley knew it, was all one grace. But it's a provenient grace that notifies that we are sinners. We are all sinners. And through the Spirit, we are able to recognize, for the most part, the sin that we participate in. And you and I perhaps remember that day where God made all things right again. Where God's grace was made justice. Where God's justifying grace worked through us. And we said, yes, Jesus, I believe in you. I want to have a relationship with you. And in that, God was again making all things new. But you see, now as we see in a mirror dimly, God's sanctifying grace, that sanctification that Paul talks about, that making us holy that God's word talks about, is to be worked in through us. Until we see Jesus face to face. Again, that day we enter the kingdom of heaven or Jesus returns. What will that day look like? After all, Paul says we do see in the mirror dimly right now. Well, the Bible does talk a little bit about it. Jesus says, I've created a place for you so that where I am, you may be also. In that place there are many rooms. There are other descriptions given where there'll be no more crying, no more tears, no more pain, where love is fully revealed. But for the most part, in what we know heaven is like, it remains a mystery. There is no way that you and I, I believe, could fathom what heaven looks like. I believe there's a reason why God has chosen not to fully reveal that to us. But I can tell you this. It is probably more beautiful of an image that our eyes could ever take in here on earth. And we that love music here on earth, the music in heaven is far more beautiful than our ears can ever take us or that what we can ever hear here on earth. In our hearts, there is more love there than what our hearts can even explain today. Again, Jesus Christ being fully revealed, the kingdom of heaven being fully revealed is more than what our imagination 
can ever fathom. But until then, remember that our identity is people of the one true God. Our identity is people who identify with the kingdom of God and what the kingdom of heaven is like. People that seek holiness and try to live in God's grace without sin. And our identity, my friends, are disciples right now who desire to transform the world as God's power is revealed through us. Our identity is to be turning that world upside down, just like Jesus did, and making sure those that need clothing receive clothing. Those who need food are fed. Our identity is in making sure that everybody knows who Jesus is. Just as Jesus took time to sit down in small groups and talk with the disciples, our identity is to do the same because we are people who follow the heart of Jesus. And as Paul talks also in Corinthians, Paul says, you can have all things, but if you don't have love, you can do nothing. You're nothing but a clanging gong or a cymbal. So we, as a people of God, are to share that love that we are lavished with, that God talks about through First John, God's love lavished in us. And it's a never-ending love because that way, it can be shared with the world. A love, a being honest, but yet loving. A love that accepts people for who they are, no matter how they dress, no matter how they act. It's a love that embraces them. It's a love that welcomes people even though they face addiction each and every day. It is that kind of love. It is that kind of love that welcomes a person as, who thinks very differently than you do, but yet you love them because you are unified in Christ. Because we, you and I, are children of God, called to be unified in Jesus Christ. So my prayer is, is that you will allow yourself to be immersed in this lavish love. That you will seek to live that life of holiness and righteousness. And that when you declare your identity People will re recognize that you are a person that follows Jesus. Not the world, but the one who follows Jesus. Amen and amen. Will you please pray with me? Gracious Holy God, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you are constantly making all things new. So, Lord, continue your work in and through us. And I thank you, Lord, that you are still working on us until that day when we see you face to face. And then you shall see us as your own. But for those who don't feel important, that don't feel loved, Lord, let them feel your love. For those who are suffering right now, let them feel your healing and your strength. For those who are walking in fear, place a hedge of protection around them and give them assurance that you are walking and talking with them each and every day. And Lord, for those who are serving our country here and abroad, we ask for your safety, your protection, and also for you to sustain them and give them strength. And Lord, as we come to you today, we thank God for the life of Jean Lambert. And I'm sorry, my friends, that I'm just now sharing this, but um, Jean went to be with the Lord yesterday. And Jean has now seen Jesus 
She has seen you, Jesus, face to face. So Lord, as we glimpse through her life, let us also see your life and what you desire for us. I ask that you bring her family and friends great comfort. And I ask for all of those who are grieving on this day that you bring them comfort. And Lord, I ask that you forgive us of our sins when we do not live in the image you desire, when we do things that separate us from you and each other. Forgive us, Lord. And as always, Lord, let us participate in the means of grace. And as we do now, we pray that prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. I want to remind us this morning that God is generous. God has lavished on us many gifts. And I want to thank you for your generosity so that has been able to be shared with the world through your giving. This morning we are not going to pass the offering plate, but we do pass the love of Jesus around. And we ask that you share that offering by placing it in a box that's between the sanctuary and the gathering room. And we ask that you continue to share your gifts with not only those gathered here, but those throughout the world. Because when you share them, that makes the kingdom of God more rich and more full. So thank you again for doing all that you do. And knowing that, let us rise together as we join together in singing. And can it be that I should gain a Charles Wesley song that reminds us of the price that has been paid for us so that we can gain salvation and Christ's holy love. Oh, 
all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Claim the identity. Claim the crown that God has set aside for you. And there's going to be times that we look in the mirror and we see the world dimly. We see ourselves as having a bad day or maybe somebody else is making our day bad. And there's going to be people that we meet are having a bad day and people that don't feel loved. My friends, no matter what, there's nothing you can do about it. God still loves you. And God wants a relationship with you. And the same goes for the world out there. God loves them and wants a relationship with them. So go now in God's boldness, sharing the good words of who God is. God is love. Go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God goes with you each step of the way. Amen and amen. Let us remain standing and in place as we sing the benediction song to one another. You may turn around or just peer sideways, whatever you wish to do. But may God raise each of you on eagle's wings. And may God hold each of you in the palm of God's hand. Yeah.